Utah Attorney General Mark Shirtleff joins us to talk about this. Uh, Attorney General, thank you so much for joining us. If you could just first outline the, the main reasons that, that you're suing here, because I looked when the number was only 12 earlier. Each of the attorneys general was a Republican, not one Democrat involved in the lawsuits uh, as of yet. It seems like it's drawn along party lines. It seems that way. We're really proud of uh, a real brave Democratic Attorney General, Buddy Caldwell, down in Louisiana, uh, because this isn't about the politics. Uh, it's about states' rights and the, the duty of uh, attorneys general to protect the rights of states and individuals. Uh, look, I, I've sued uh, Republican administrations plenty of times, along with Democrats, whenever they encroach on states' rights. And this is the biggest, the most massive encroachment upon uh, the Tenth Amendment states and individual rights that we've ever seen in the, in the history of this country. And so we have a duty to stand up and, uh, and say, look, there's, you've done your debating back there in Congress. This isn't about the policy, whether it's a good idea or not, but there's a new sheriff in town and you have to, you have to obey the law. And this is about the rule of law, about what's constitutional or not. Mark, let me ask you, though, about the constitutional rights of those of us who pay for health care and end up paying for those who don't, whether it's in, you know, uh, higher hospital bills or so on and so forth, for those folks who use the emergency room to get their medical care. What about the constitutional rights of those folks? Well, what we're talking about here is who has the responsibility and the duty under law to protect the the rights of individuals. And when it comes to health care, that's traditionally been left to the states. Uh, what about those people here who, who are self-insured or who don't ever use health care system? And you're requiring them to do something, uh, to buy something, a service, and to pay a penalty if you don't. That, that simply is un-American. And, and it's way beyond the Commerce Clause power of the, of the Congress. Uh, it should be left to the states, and that's what we're going to argue. Is there uh, any other uh, federal provision that mandates the purchase of a product for each individual of this country? I mean, a lot of people will say uh, car insurance, but then you make the decision to drive before you have to purchase car insurance. Anything else that we have to buy according to the federal government? There is not. That's why we say it's so unprecedented. I mean, this is just a living tax. You're just, just being alive, whether you use it or not. And even with car insurance, even though that's usually a state and you also get something out of it, car insurance is mostly there to protect the people you run into. But this is on an individual, whether you use health care or not, whether you pay for it or not, you're going to have to do something. Now, and, and that is a massive expansion of federal power. And, and, it's, and so someone has to stand up and say no. So we're hoping to get a, a declaratory judgment in federal court just on that issue and, of course, on Medicaid expansion. We're, we're not trying to kill the whole bill. There's some very laudatory benefits in this bill. Uh, but, again, it's, it's not about what's good in it or what the, what the motive was. Whatever we do in this country, we're a rule of, of law nation, and we have to follow the law. I wonder, you know, Virginia and, uh, and Iowa have both uh, banned, legislated a ban on mandatory health care, uh, health insurance. Will Utah follow state? Will other states follow, follow suit? Utah has. That is our law. Uh, it was signed into law yesterday. Our, our session ended a week ago. Our governor signed it into law yesterday. And so we do have that specific standing. That, so Utah law says that no Utah citizen shall be required to purchase health care insurance. So we have a direct conflict now between state law and federal law. I understand 30-something uh, states are looking at the same type of a law. And so it does set up standing for us in the courts. But the argument's there whether you uh, have that state law or not. So, Mark, what do you propose as a better way to make sure that everybody has health insurance? Well, look, as, as, they're, as they're going through things, a, a free market approach, there have been lots of recommendations given. The state of Utah actually has a system in place that we've been working on for about eight years. In fact, President Obama himself has said, you know, Utah's really doing it right. That's all we're asking is states and states' rights is let this be handled by the states. That's where it's done traditionally. Uh, you know, Massachusetts has an example where they actually mandated health care in, in uh, Massachusetts. I'm not agreeing with it, but I'm saying at least it was at the state level, which is more uh, consistent with our, our separation of powers and, and our Constitution when it comes to federalism and federal and state powers. Mark, you've been working on this for eight years. States have had years and years and years to get something in place to take care of those uninsured. Maybe the federal government said enough is enough. You guys have had plenty of time. You haven't done it, so we're going to do it. Well, you know, do it. But again, are we a rule of a law nation or not? Do we believe in the Constitution or not? You can want to do something really, really badly, and it may be something very, very good that we need to do. But you, you don't say we're above the law. You follow the law. That's all we're talking about here is, is making sure that what they want to do is done correctly and legally. And we don't believe it has, and that's why we're suing. I wonder, you know, there are a lot of uh, uh, state laws that are overruled by federal law. Do you really think you win in this case where you wouldn't in, in any other cases? 
Well, clearly it's an uphill battle. Anytime you go to federal court and ask a federal judge to limit the power of federal government, you know it's an uphill battle. But there are, there are good judges and good courts who also believe that the Tenth Amendment is just as much a part of the Constitution as the Commerce Clause, who believe that separation vertically between state and federal government is an important part of the Constitution. And so we believe we have an opportunity. There have been a couple of cases in the last 10 years uh, that have started limiting that commerce power and said, no, you've got to prove your case. It's not unlimited. And, and the Supremacy Clause only comes into place when the, the, uh, when the feds have acted appropriately pursuant to constitutional uh, authority. They just can't pass any law and say, well, we're the feds, you're the state, therefore whatever we decide to do, it, it's going to supersede your laws. That's just not the way things are done in this country. And it's just a simple reminder that you have to follow the law in this got country. It. All right. Hey, Attorney General, thank you Thanks. so much for joining us. Really appreciate it.